mother would. I was thinking I'd contribute my life to making them alive. I thought about how I should communicate with these pieces of wood. I'd make my work a gift to the earth. Kang is a famous woodcarving artist in Taiwan. Born and raised in Taiwan, Kang aims to innovate through traditional woodcarving craftwork and its manifestations. Woodcarving is a form of sculpture making and has a rich history in China. It's widespread across different parts of China and enjoys a fluctuating popularity accordingly. Different local cultures, wood materials and craftwork create different types, each with their own merits. Woodcarving in Taiwan is closely tied to the local religion. People in the coastal area worship the goddess Matsu. Each household has their own Matsu statues. Taiwanese attach great importance to religious activities. Gods are a theme of wood carving. Soon it became a kind of craft and it became our routine to worship the carvings as idols. Such wood carvings share similarities with those on the Chinese mainland. In the early days, wood carving artists came to Taiwan from Fuzhou in Fujian province of the Chinese mainland. Coastal townships in western Taiwan like Pei Kang, Lu Kang and Tongxiao share origins of the Taiwanese wood carving. Kang was born in Tongxiao, a small town in western Taiwan in 1961 when wood carving reached its prime. At that time, people in Tongxiao made a living on mountains and ocean. But life on ocean was dangerous. People started building temples in the hope of having a peaceful life. A hundred odd years ago, hundreds of woodcarving artists came to Tongxiao from Fuzhou to carve wood statues when temples were built. It was how woodcarving blossomed in this small coastal town. As Kang grew up, woodcarving became a popular craft. Nearly every family made a living on wood carving, carving god statues for temples like Guan Yu, Guan Yan, the god of longevity and the god of prosperity, respectively. Kang started learning wood carving to help his family when he was 13. Influenced by what he saw and heard, he quickly learned the skills of traditional wood carving. However, Yong Kang preferred painting on Tongxiao's beach to carving traditional god statues cut by cut. He sketched in the sand with a wood stick, stroke by stroke before the tides came in and sketched his imagination freely. I felt very happy when I was with Mother Nature. When my parents went fishing, I went to play by the sea to catch crabs. I went to the field to catch mudge fish. I also went to the mountains and stayed with trees, birds and insects. The nature has inspired and enriched Kung's imagination and observation. As he grew up, he wanted to leave home and see the world to create works that better expressed himself. In 1986, 25-year-old Kang left home and went to Sunyi Township in Miaoli County. Sunyi Township is located in northeast Taiwan and is surrounded by hills. Its nearby forest is rich in woodcarving materials, which has helped the local woodcarving industry prosper. There's many woodcarving shops in Sunyi Township. 
In the 1970s, the local wood carvings are largely exported to Japan and Europe. In 1979, a film called The Story of a Small Town was a hit on both sides of the Taiwan Straits, featuring a beautiful soundtrack by Teresa Tung. In the film, the story takes place in Sanyi Township and its wood carving tradition is highlighted. Sanyi Township was then known as the home of wood carving. Wood carving at that period was dominated by themes of art and life. Its religious features faded gradually. Wood carving gradually reflected people's lifestyle. So, wood carving during that period was closely related to lifestyle and accomplishment. Wood carving in Sanyi also promoted local tourism. The Jiaoshan line of Sanyi Railway only stretched 13.6 kilometers before it was shut down. Nowadays, wood carving has made Sanyi a popular tourist spot. The wood carving works of camphor wood were shipped to the outside world on the Jiaoshan line. Sunyi wood carving mainly uses camphor wood and sometimes stout camphor wood, beech, cypress, sandalwood and other precious woods. Camphor wood has dense natural grain. Its hard and dense texture prevents breaking and cracking, which makes it wood carver's first choice. To make a wood carving, the carvers first need to find the right wood. Hard and bright wood with intense grain gives great expressiveness to the carving and adds to its value as a collector's item. Different woods may look very similar. They're hard to distinguish with your eyes, but not with your nose, because they each have a unique scent. The carving style in Sanyi is different from that of Tongxiao, where carvers carve strictly by theme, while the market in Sanyi prefers a natural work based on uniquely shaped wood. To gain a firm foothold in Sanyi, Kang must shift his way of thinking and learn from the beginning. At that time, some experienced carvers started creating such style, combining nature and carving, but they weren't skillful enough. In Tongxiao, statues were more popular, while animal carving was more popular in Sanyi. And I thought, since I specialized in carving statues, I could attach the statue's shapes to the oddly shaped wood. The carving of god statues is restricted by god's appearances and their neat posture and clothing. As Sanyi is famous for its abundant resources of oddly shaped wood, Kung started carving statues on them. He keeps an overall steady shape and highlights the facial expressions with his fine carving skills. He strengthens their characteristics by following the wood's changing morphology. His unique style soon brought him fame. I worked on the street in Sanyi. I received many orders and my works were very popular. 
Business was good, but I wasn't satisfied. I no longer wanted to continue integrating nature and carving because such style had been mastered by many people. There were many carvings like this on the market and I realized I must change my style. Sanyi Wood Sculpture Museum was established in 1995 and it preserves Sanyi's best wood carvings. In 1996, it held the Taiwan Wood Carving Competition. Today, the competition is upgraded to Taiwan International Wood Carving Contest, open to competitors from all over the world. This carving belongs to the Body Dharma collection. It's been on display in the Wood Sculpture Museum since 1995. I'd like you to know carving the head part is a good way to learn carving. It's how this collection was started. The first cut was taken from the head. We must pay attention to its material and grains. Then we start carving. And we keep on carving. It forms into a structure during this process. Kung used a gradual way to show us how he made the Bodhidharma statue. It's seen as a classic to interpret traditional Sanyi wood carving. But during that time, Sanyi's wood carving style was facing changes. The development of the wood carving culture was becoming artistic as it upgraded from craft to art, so its range of creation became extensive. At that time, many wood carvers rushed to abandon their old styles, add modern elements, and even adopt international styles. So they added many foreign elements. Kung also tried to create new styles and new themes. He concentrated his efforts on originality and artistry. I came back to the beach in Tongxiao and saw the power of the sea. So I wandered by the sea and saw some beautiful waves and shells. The sea of Kung's hometown reminded him of his carefree childhood and as well as the strength and beauty of nature. He was eager to express what he felt through his work. He rejected the restrictions of the traditional style of realism and transformed his style to creating conceptual abstractions. After I came back, I saw those pieces of wood and had a fantasy. I was thinking how I should carve the wood make it look soft and attach the beauty of the shells and waves on it. Then I put it into practice. After Kang came back from Tongxiao, he created the Island and Shell Collection. My mother grew up in the country and she raised many pigs. When she saw my work, she thought it was a pork trough because it was lying on the ground and didn't look artistic. But when I put it up, it became a piece of art. Kung integrated his childhood memory into his work. This was the first step of innovation. There's an animal that best represents our culture, and that is the buffalo. The buffalo is hard-working and down-to-earth. Mr. Kung's original style was practical. He worked hard to learn the basic methodology and skills. Then he started to change. 
So I think he was like a buffalo. Soon after, he realized traditional skills were insufficient and could abandon them. He found a solution to improve himself. He learnt from a rabbit, which bounces about in a lively and unpredictable way. Turtle Island is located half an hour off the eastern coast of Taiwan. It covers 3,000 square metres and is named for its turtle-like shape. It was a deserted island, but was gradually developed into a village as a resting spot for the fishermen. Since 1977, the fishermen moved back to Taiwan due to inconvenient living condition and transportation. Their houses, temples and school dorms are still on the island. Taiwan was pounded by a typhoon in 1999. The storms tore down the old trees on Taiping Mountain in Ilan. They drifted to the sea and are now scattered around the beach on Turtle Island. Three years later, Kung was invited to do wood carving on Turtle Island by the local government. But Kung didn't know this trip would become a new start for his art and his life. This is a washing basin. I found a floating ball by the beach, cut about one third of it and made it my washing basin. I'll use it to wash my face. Kung brought back all the floating balls by the beach and strung them up like a bunch of grapes. A piece of bullhead-like wood hangs on the wall as decoration. Refuse like the white foam balls and woods are all aesthetic utensils in Kung's eyes. For me, these items all have different backgrounds. I often study how these oddly shaped items drifted here and what the stories behind them are. I like to think and learn about them. Others left, but Kung decided to stay. He lived in a deserted hut like Robinson Crusoe. Sometimes, I go to that beach to look for deserted things and drifting refuse. I found things like slippers. I can find many things to wear. Life at Turtle Island was hard and simple, but Kung's inner world had never been so rich. the year he stayed in the island, Kung searched every corner of the island for driftwood. He saw the pieces as his heavenly blessed gifts. There are weed trees and other woods we don't know. The best woods are cypress, stout camphor wood, and Xiaolan wood. They can only be found in Taiwan, but they're hard to find. I had to keep searching. Maybe it drifted here today, maybe not. Maybe you just can't find it. It could be hidden away or buried beneath the ground. It's like they're asleep and then awakened by the waves. Every piece of wood we see was found like this, especially those found by me. It's like they were awaiting me. Kung knocked off the mud on the trunk, cut off the decayed bark with a saw, 
and sawed off the excessive wood to show grain and let the scent waft out. I like to see whether its inner structure and material are of good quality. I can only see its grain and annual ring after I made my cut. Then I can think of how I could create its value. Kung started conversing with the wood on the deserted island. This is a whole new creative experience for Kung, who tried to rid himself of his past experience and skills to embrace new inspirations and ideas. To make his new journey more convenient, Kung handmade his own carving tools. The tools are carver's best and closest partners. Carving knives and other assistive tools also play important roles in the process of wood carving. I mostly use fishtail gouges and sometimes straight gouges. Some are big, some are small. I also have to make tools for my own convenience. Sometimes ordinary tools can't reach deep enough. That's why I make them myself. The most frequently used tool of Kung is the electric saw. Wood carving is practiced by removing excess wood from the outside in and the outlook of the work is shown step by step. Carving the damaged wood demands precise skills, but Kung carves boldly and drastically. Kung grew up by the sea and he's seen how sand on the beach is blown by sea breeze. When the breeze comes by, the sand and the breeze blend together. After the breeze is gone, he's fascinated by the smooth surface of the beach. Inspired by the blend, Kung combined softness into the basic carving skills like cutting, chopping, sweeping, mowing and integrating and invented his own way of wood carving, the breeze cut. I cut off the unnecessary parts and think of what to do next. The key to improving skills and crafts is refinement. I must keep carving and feel it cut by cut to make it perfect. Every step of wood carving must be precise, from picking the right wood, cutting its outline, to carving the details. Carving a piece of wood is like breeding a new life. No one can feel its joy or sorrow except the carver himself. Sometimes I made up my mind after thinking what to do and conversing with the wood. But I find that the wood is hollow inside. It's like my inspirations disappeared. Under such circumstances, I'd stop my work in such disappointment. I mean, there must be a reason why nature creates such imperfections. Nature creates deformed, defective, rotten and mottled woods. Carvers can only make them art by heaven's will, fate, chance and skill. This is a challenge encountered nowhere else and a key to make a craftsman into a master. You have to be patient when making handicrafts. If you devote yourself to it, it'll present its beauty. Many years ago, carvers were making statues for the goddess Matsu, Guan Yu and the Buddha. We carve them in our own way, blend in our ideas to bring out their romantic charms. 
Carvers bring out different charms. After Kung's dedicated work, the outline of the statue is appearing. But besides carving his speciality statues, can he rid himself of the traditional processes and make his work more creative? Living in Turtle Mountain Island is like living in exile. But Kung calmed himself down in loneliness and started thinking the true meaning of life. He wandered the beach day by day and listened to the waves hitting the rocks. His face is soothed by the sea breeze and he freely embraces nature like in his childhood. There's a hot spring around the island. The spring water is 200 degrees and there are crabs living in there. One day, I angled some crabs and started boiling them. They were not afraid of the boiling water and were still alive in it. Then I realized they lived in the 200 degrees hot spring. Water of 100 degrees can't kill them. Kang's new perception of life became his new inspiration, which brought out the rich imagination of his childhood. He gradually rid himself of the restrictions of the traditional style and blended in his new perceptions of life. His work became more down to earth and contains more positive energy. Carvers tend to polish off the carving marks to refine the carving, but Kung prefers to keep the marks and present the original rough texture of wood. From 2002 to 2010, Kung created his Deep Love Collection and Life Collection. Kinship is the theme of the Deep Love Collection, which combines abstraction with representation, echoing strength and beauty. The Life Collection is based on the human uterus. The touchstone of this collection is gentleness and softness, which reflect the original state of life, presenting more hints of his philosophy. The whole piece of work is natural. It's called Mother and Son, the mother's seen vicissitudes of life and passes her love to her son, which is her continued vitality. When I look at this piece of work, it's like seeing my mother. I wouldn't be standing here without her nurturing me. This piece of work is called Expectation. It means expecting new life and the coming of a circle of life. Creating this piece of work requires craft work, very skilled craft work. The line and shape gradually come out with skilled craft work. Though the wood had aged and endured storms, it all became flexible and passionate art in Kung's hands. All the works look different but share one common characteristic which is that they present life's original form and aesthetic perception of the wood's shape, cracks and grains. Taipei 101 is the third tallest building in the world and a landmark and tourist attraction of Taiwan. 
Guardian, one of Kung's works in the Life Collection, is displayed on its 59th floor. Our displayed artworks are from the US, Germany, Hong Kong and Taiwan. It's rare to see carvings with philosophical meaning behind them. Most carvings of that type are not abstract, while mother and son is. But one can still tell its morphology. It totally escapes the tradition of expressing its feeling by its exterior. It presents the idea behind it in a visionary and universal way, I think that's what makes Mr. Kang stand out. All of Mr. Kang's collection, like the Sea and Shell collection, Deep Love collection and Life collection, share a common foundation. They all elaborate the meaning of life, but their techniques of expression are not the same. After Kung left the Turtle Island, he came back to Sanyi, poured bronze into his works and put them in his yard. He feels alive with his works. I've been doing smaller pieces of work recently. My body is becoming weak, you know. I'll seize my day while I'm still healthy and carve some larger sacred woods. The Taiwanese people regard 1,000-year-old cypress as a sacred kind of wood. They have thick roots and tall and thin trunks. They grow slow and are rare to find. The local government forbids people from cutting them down. There are many cypress forests on Ali Mountain and its foothills. They are the mecca for Taiwanese woodcarvers. Kung often comes here to look for inspirations hidden in their annual ring. These sacred trees are magnificent. They are protectors of this land. We're so proud of them. Seventy years ago, many of the sacred woods were taken by the Japanese for construction use. A 2,000-year-old sacred wood was purchased by a Japanese shrine construction company and placed in a factory in Fukuoka. A Taiwanese timber dealer paid a higher price and bought it back. Now, Kung plans to create a piece of work with this old sacred wood. I'll create a new life for it. I believe it's not just a piece of work, but also a memory of its time. It reminds us there was once a gigantic sacred wood out there. Kung has a greater plan. He'll search all continents to find sacred woods, make them into artwork and establish a sacred wood sculpture museum.